Everybody. Oh, come on. Y'all can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm glad to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's been a long week, but I thank God for my space in the building. And I am most certain that God deserves my praise this morning and my worship. Amen. It's no coincidence that we're sitting here this morning. So can we just worship him? My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, y'all, help us say, My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it. Said you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you my hallelujah my hallelujah belongs to you my hallelujah belongs to you said my hallelujah my hallelujah belongs you. you deserve it. 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 All of the glory, all of the glory belongs. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory, Lord. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory, Lord, say. All of the glory belongs to you. You deserve, you deserve. You did. 
belongs to you. Every mouth, let's say that together. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah. Come on, if you know that God deserves your best praise, can we just lift the highest praise this morning, which is hallelujah, 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 because he deserves it. Despite of how I feel in my body, despite of what I'm going through, the Lord deserves it. The Lord deserves it. Because he's been good time and time again. The Lord deserves it. New mercies every morning. I see you deserve it. Every day that I open my eyes, I'm clothed and in my right he deserves it. When I drive from Greensboro to Lexington and from Lexington to Greensboro safely, he deserves it. Every time I open my mouth to talk, he deserves it. Every time I'm able to wave my hand, he deserves it. Every time I step into the house of the Lord, he deserves it. My God. We take for granted life. We take for granted life. Songwriter said it could have been me outdoors with no food and no clothes. All left alone without a friend just another number with the tragic end but this is my favorite part but you did not see fit he said but you did not see fit maybe i'm the only one that's excited because he did not see fit to let none of these things be Oh, but somebody knows this one. But every day by his power. Yes. All right, I'm going to leave. Woo. Every day by his power. He keeps on keeping me. So I'll just take a second and say, thank you, Lord. I'm sorry if I prolong service for a second. But can I take a couple seconds just to tell God thank you this morning? Y'all, I'm gonna move, but you know, I had one of the staff members at the elementary school I drive for came to my bus earlier this week and told me there's four students that are being taken off my bus. Two are in kindergarten, one is in fourth, one is in fifth. Long story short, they lost one parent last year due to suicide. Mom was just placed in the hospital because she was attacked this week. She's not even recognizable, not responsive. But yet I still say thank you, Lord. You want to know why? Because that could have been me. That could have been me laid up in that hospital. But since I have the activity of my limbs this morning, I'm going to stand in the gap and I declare heal. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just one of them people. I'm not a selfish praiser. So you'll have to excuse me. Because he did not see fit. Okay, I'm going to move. I'm going to move. I'm going to move. He didn't see fit. He saw fit to let me wake up this morning. Woo. Because the enemy did everything he could this week. All right. All right. Let's move, y'all. Let's move. Let's move. Praise the Lord, everybody. I say praise the Lord. 
Lord, everybody. Everybody stand to your feet. Let's give God some praise up in here. All right. I want everybody to put your hands together. That's what I'm talking about. Some good old hand clapping and foot stomping. That's where we going this morning. Myself, so I'm going to let you. <laughs> Amen. Can we put our hands together Woo! for God on today? He's worthy to be praised. I believe that was for somebody on today. That he's telling somebody to fight on. In spite of what you're going through, in spite of how you feel, he's telling somebody to fight in this place on today. 
And I don't know about you, but I'm like the old preacher. I'm going to run on and see what the end's going to be. I'm going to fight on. God, I thank you in this place. You're worthy to be praised. So we're going to move on to the next part of our service, and that is the opportunity to give. This is another form of worship. And I believe in giving, and I want you to put a smile on your face. I want you to get ready to give. Give the best that you can to a God that has given us his best. So look at the ways to give on the screen. The traditional form when we talk about cash and check is coming around. But you can also give digitally. Uh, through the cash app as well as give them a five. But just get your money ready and let's get ready to give to God. Father, we ask right now that everything that was given, that it will be used to spread your gospel, to tell others about you. So that it will be used to bless this community and build your kingdom. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen, and amen. Before we get into the word of God, we have a couple announcements. So... Um, our member, uh, Miss Connie Cassette, she is going to be performing the creation, which is a drama by a drama by James Weldon Johnson on Sunday. That is going to be May fifth at three thirty uh, for the twentieth year Mother of the Year program, and it's going to be at New Life Worship Center, which is right down the road um, at one seventy one Garden Drive, where Bishop Dennis Clark Felford is the pastor. Again. That is going to be on Sunday, May 5th at 3.30. Then, y'all know our next announcement is we are having a family and friends day, but this family and friends day is going to be a little different because we're not going to have this family and friends day actually at the church. But we are going to be at Breeding Amphitheater, and that is going to be at 11 o'clock a.m. We're going to start at 11 o'clock. Lunch is going to be provided. Now listen, because this is going to be outside at an amphitheater, what's going to happen is, is we need to make sure that we bring our lawn, some lawn chairs or some type of chairs or some blankets that you can sit on because there are no seats that are available. So please make sure that you bring some type of, of, of seating 
um, to this event, okay? So please make sure you do that for me. Is that all right? Yeah. All right, so our announcements are done. Um, we are ready to get into the word of the Lord. So what I want you to do is I want you to turn with me to the gospel according to Mark. And we're going to be coming from Mark chapter 14. And if I need some volume, it's going to be on that, on the far, on the other side. Mark chapter 14. And we're going to be looking at verses 32 through 36. Mark chapter 14. Verses 32 through 36. And this is what the word of the Lord says. It says, then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John with him and began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch. Verse 35. He went a little further and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. For just a little while, I want to speak from the subject, under pressure. Under pressure pressure. Can we bow our heads as we go to God in prayer? Father, we need you right now. Father, we need your power and we need your word. Father, I'm asking right now that you would stir something up in the hearts of your people. Give them a hunger and a thirst for your word right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I ask that you would open their ears and open their hearts to what you desire to say in this place. I believe that somebody who is here needs this word. So I'm asking that you would reveal yourself to them right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Speak to them, God. Encourage them. Strengthen them right now in the precious name of Jesus. And I need you. Because I am nothing but a man. I cannot do what needs to be done in the lives of your people, but you can. You have the power to change. You have the power to give people what they need. So, Father, I'm depending on you. You have your way. You speak through me right now in the precious name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, give me every word to say. Help me to speak with power and with understanding. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen, and amen. Under pressure. There are certain situations that you can find yourself in that it can cause you to feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. And there is not going to be any relief in sight. And what we call this a lot of times is, is we call this being under pressure. And when you find yourself under this type of pressure where you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders, when you find yourself under that type of pressure, it can begin to take a toll on you. Being under pressure can literally affect you in such a way that it can impact every single part of you as an individual. When you are under pressure, it can impact you physically. What am I talking about? If you find yourself under enough pressure, what will happen is is you can be 25, but you can look like you're 55. Pressure affects you physically. It affects you emotionally. It'll have you all over the place. One minute you're okay, and then the next minute you're overcome with all of these negative feelings. Even when we talk about mentally, pressure can affect you mentally because it will have you, making you feel like you're about to lose your mind. A lot of times when you're under pressure, you can't even think straight, and you don't even feel normal. But it doesn't just stop there to also impact you spiritually. 
And when I say spiritually, I'm talking about negatively because sometimes when you're dealing with certain things, it will have you questioning God. It'll have you asking questions like, why me? It'll have you asking questions, God, do you hear me? So it will impact you in all of these ways, and it brings on stress. And how many of you know that stress will kill you? Pressure will kill you. And it's only so much pressure that you can handle before you feel like you are going to bust. I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how much church you go to. I don't care how much scripture you read. It's only so much pressure that an individual can take before they will bust. Even when you look at things that are designed to handle pressure, they can only take so much pressure. When you look at some of the pipes, the pipes that they make can handle extreme amount of pressure, but it can only handle so much. When we talk about the technology in these submarines, y'all have seen them. They can go thousands of miles down into the depths of the sea, but we have seen before that they can only handle so much pressure. You can only handle so much pressure and you need to know this because of the society and the times that we live in. We live in a time where we are under a constant state of pressure. When we talk about the pressures of life and the pressure from other people, we talk about if you got kids in here, you know what I'm talking about. The pressures of raising a child is something else. The pressure of paying bills and if you are a man of the house, I'm talking about you trying to be a real man of the house. You know what type of pressure comes along with that. Even peer pressure and the lofty expectations of family and the society they have placed on us, it begins to take a toll on us, and I don't even want to get on the job on today. I ain't going to talk about y'all's job because it ain't Monday yet. I ain't going to get y'all all mad at me this morning. But we know how the job can place pressures on us and I feel like there are some people in here who feel like that the pressure is starting to be too much and I want to help you on today with how to deal with pressure now I can't teach you if you came here when I start talking about under pressure and you wanted me to teach you how to avoid pressure I can't teach you how to avoid pressure because I'm telling you right now as long as you are alive and there is breath in your body you will always be under some type of pressure so I'm not teaching you how to avoid pressure, but what I want to teach you on today is how to deal with pressure. You can make it through the pressure because we have the ultimate example on how to deal with pressure, and that is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The example is right here in our word because where we're reading in this passage of scripture, Jesus, he lays out the blueprint for how to deal with pressure. It says that he is in the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples. And he knows that things have been set in motion for him to die on a cross. Jesus is well aware that Judas has already started to betray him. This is not something that caught him by surprise. He knows what's happening. Not only that, the disciples that he took care of and ministered to, he knows that when he gets up on that cross, every single one of them are going to desert him and one is going to deny him. So Jesus is under pressure. Even when you read the word of God, it tells us what type of pressure and stress that our Lord and Savior was up under. Look at verses 33 and 34. It says, and he took Peter, James, and John with him and began to be troubled. And what does it say? And deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. And when I read this, y'all, some of y'all may think this is weird, but I find it extremely encouraging. And I get excited that Jesus was under pressure. But the reason I get excited about it is because my Lord and Savior understands exactly how I feel. When I'm under pressure, he doesn't look down on me because he's gone through the same things that I have and he knows how it feels. My Lord and Savior is not asking me to go through something that he won't go through. 
So it encourages me. But when I read the word of God, we have to ask ourselves, how does Jesus deal with pressure? Well, what Jesus did when he was under this type of pressure, it says in the word of God that Jesus, when he was under pressure, the first thing that he did was he prayed. Not only did Jesus pray one time, but it tells us that if y'all read on your own time, it tells us that he prayed three different times when he is under pressure. So what this is telling me is that you, if you want to learn how to deal with pressure and have a release from pressure, you are going to have to learn how to pray. Jesus got his disciples together and he said, let's pray. He prayed. And if you pay attention to this, Jesus did not turn to some type of escape like we do. Jesus didn't turn to binge watching television shows. He didn't turn to drugs and alcohol, but he turned to God through prayer. Even when we look at the power that Jesus possessed, Jesus had the power to stop all of this. But Jesus didn't even rely on his own power, but he relied on God. He turned to his father first. He went to the one who he knew would get results. And if Jesus didn't turn to his power or depend on himself, what makes us think that we can We need God. When you are under pressure, you have got to turn to God. And the best way for you to turn to God is through prayer. But y'all know what our issue is when we get in trouble and we get under pressure. We turn to everything else but God. A lot of times when we're under pressure, God is not, a prayer is not our first response, but it is a last resort. In other words, when we've tried everything else and we down it out and realize nothing will work, we will turn to God. Now, that is not a problem in the sense of I'm glad that you turn to God and you're depending on God. But can you imagine all the unnecessary stuff that you put yourself through because you won't learn how to pray first when you get under pressure? And when you turn to him last, what happens is, is you will find yourself under more and more pressure. Because you don't have every, you don't have the power to change everything in your life. As a matter of fact, outside of the power of Jesus Christ, there, there isn't much that you can do. But I can tell you something right now. You may not have the power to fix it. But I came here to tell somebody that there is power in prayer. I came here to tell somebody that when you get down on your knees and pray, prayer has the ability to change some things. How many folks know that when you call on the name of Jesus, it makes a difference? When you plead the blood of Jesus, when you're down on your knees in prayer, it makes a difference. I know we all educated and we got money and we've learned how to depend on some other things. But I encourage you that when you're under pressure, learn how to pray and depend on God. That's what will fix your situation. Jesus prayed and God answered his prayer. As a matter of fact, when you read the gospel of Luke, it said that angels came down from heaven and they appeared before Jesus and they strengthened him. In other words, God gave Jesus the strength and exactly what he needed in the moment that he needed it through prayer. And he will do the same thing for us, but we have to understand like Jesus understood that when I am weak, he is strong. And the way to act Access the strength of God is through calling on God in prayer. God will always send what you need when you need it and how you need it. You have to just learn to call on him. Your strength and your deliverance and your victory is in God and he will give all of those things freely. But you have to learn to call on him and cry out to him through prayer. That's what we have to do because prayer allows you to deal with pressure because it allows you to talk to God and hear from God. 
And because you are talking to God and hearing from God, you become very confident that he is near and that he sees you and he hears your prayers and he knows exactly what you're going through. I need you to learn how to get in the presence of God through prayer because let me tell you what happens when you get in the presence of God and you get near God. When you get near to God, pressure can't stay near to you because my Bible says, and I wish we would read it sometimes, but my Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, it says that there is freedom. It doesn't say where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is pressure, but it says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom from the pressures of this life in the presence of the Father. Jesus' response to pressure was prayer, and he got free from all of the pressure. And you want to be like Jesus and learn to pray so we don't end up like the disciples. Because when you look at the disciples, they were supposed to be praying. Especially when you look at what Jesus told him. Jesus told him he didn't leave any gray area. Jesus says that when you become when you become under pressure because you see me up there on that cross, he says that every single one of you are going to fail miserably. He told them in the gospel according to Mark, he says that all of you will desert me. And he gets even more personal with Peter. And he says that before the rooster crows twice, you're going to deny me three times. So he is letting them know that when you are under pressure, you will fail. But look at how they handle things. Jesus is praying, but when you read the word of God, it says that the disciples were sleeping. Instead of praying, they were sleeping, and a lack of prayer caused them to have a lack of strength in the time that they needed it. They were not prepared for what lied ahead because they had not prepared through prayer. And I want to talk to somebody in this place on today. I believe that a lot of us cannot fight when a fight comes to us and we don't have strength because we are not prepared through prayer. We always fold like a lawn chair because we won't learn to be prayer warriors and get in our prayer closet and call on the name of Jesus. Some of us can't win because we don't have a consistent prayer life. But when you look at the disciples, they learned how to pray and get in the presence of God because it tells us that they were found sleeping and they failed when they were under pressure. But when they learned the power of prayer, we see that it took a total shift. And when they were under pressure, they did not fold. And if you know anything about the disciples, a lot of them died through death. But they did not fear. They would not fold under pressure. They kept preaching the gospel in the face of danger because they learned how to communicate with God. So Jesus prayed when he was under pressure. The next thing that he did was, is not only did he pray, but he released control. He prayed and he released control to God. When you find yourself under pressure, you have to pray about whatever has you under pressure, and then you have to give it to God. You have to release control, and Jesus is the example because we see him clearly release control because look at what it says in verse, 30, verse 36. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. But look at what he says, nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Jesus prays and Jesus says, Father, if we can get this thing done any other way besides the cross, let's do it. He says, because I know with you all things are possible. So it can be done. But then he says, nevertheless, not what I will. In other words, not what I want, but it's about what you want. Jesus is releasing control and he's saying that, Father, it is out of my hands and I am placing it in your hands. And at this moment right here, when he prayed and released control, Jesus gave the pressure to God and he was ready to face the cross. So the best place for your pressure is not in your hands, but is in the hands of God. If God has the whole world in his hands and he has all power in his hands, what is your pressure to a God like that? 
when you give whatever's pressuring you to God and you say, let your will be done, you're taking all the pressure off of you. At that point, when you release control, you're giving it to God. And it's on God at that point. It's on God to do what he said he's going to do. It's up to God to do what he said in his word. And let me tell you something about the God that we serve. Our God is able and our God does not lie. So if the pressure is going to be anywhere, I don't want it on me, but I want it on him who will consistently come through on his word every single time. So you take the pressure off of you and you put it on God. I like to call God our pressure release valve. I told you about pipes earlier, and pipes are designed to handle a lot of pressure, but when they come under too much pressure and they are about to bust, what happens is, is they have a pressure release valve. And what this does is, is when the pressure exceeds what the pipe is designed to handle, the pressure relief valve, it opens up and releases all the pressure that the pipe is up under. God is our pressure release valve, and if we would just allow him to be what he desires to be, and when you're under pressure and you feel like you are about to bust, God will open up his power and release all of the pressure off of you. But you have to let him be God and do what he does best. You have to trust him enough to help. Handle your situation and relieve the pressure. You have to trust God enough and have the faith to know that he's turning everything around in your favor. But see, when you're under pressure, a lot of times it can test your faith and it can cause your faith to become a little shaky sometimes. Because in those times, instead of releasing control to God, what do we do? We try to take control. When we're under pressure, we have more faith in ourselves than we do in God. And we wonder why we're constantly under pressure. If you are ever going to release the pressure you are up under, you are going to have to release your desire to control the outcome of your situation. And you should have a desire to release the outcome of your situation because you can't handle what you're in. Can I prove it to you? You can't handle what you're going through because if you could, you would have fixed it by now. As a matter of fact, if you can handle it, you wouldn't even be under the pressure that you're up under. But at some point, you have got to recognize that you are not qualified to handle some pressure. At some point, the light bulb has to go off, and we have to say to ourselves, I can't control what's going on. We are not designed to handle certain things, and can I prove it? Think about all the things that have ever had you under pressure or have you under pressure right now. Think about them. Do you know why you're under pressure? It's because you realize that you can't do anything about it. So a lot of things that are pressuring you, they are out of your control. So let's try something different to get different results. My daddy used to tell me that if you want something different, you will have to do something different. If you keep doing the same things, you'll keep doing, getting the same things. So let's try something different when it comes to dealing with pressure. Let's pray to a good and qualified God and give it to him. And when you pray and you give it to God, you're in a good place. Because when you pray and release control to God, you are now in the will of God. And when you are in the will of God, you may be under pressure, but you are going to make it. When you are in the will of God, everything is going to be all right. Because when you are in the will of God, there is perfection in the will of God. There are no mistakes in the will of God. When you are in the will of God, You are positioning yourself to prosper. Because in the will of God, there is safety. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? In the will of God, there is strength. In the will of God, there is grace and mercy and power and favor. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the will of God. When you're in the will of God, you have everything that you need for your victory. I don't care what you're facing. When you're in the will of God, everything is going to be all right. I don't care what type of pressure you're under. You will not crumble because you are in the will of God. And I know everything's going to be all right because he promised in his word. He said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. And what did he say? 
He says, I will give you rest. He said, I'll give you rest from your pressure. But he doesn't stop there. In verse 29, he said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And he says, you will find. You will find. That is a guarantee. He says, you will find rest for your soul. Is it anybody that wants to be free from the pressures of life? I guarantee you to get near to God and the further you will get away from pressure. Stand to your feet. Find myself in the will of God. When I'm in the will of God and his hand is on my life, I don't care what pressure comes. When his hand is on my life, nothing can destroy my life. When God's hand is on my life, I don't care what people are saying about me. I don't care what they're doing. I don't care what the enemy's doing. I'm not concerned about that because his hand is on my life. Found myself under pressure the other day, and kept waking up in the middle of the night. And the first thing I did was, is I prayed. I said, I don't know why I'm uneasy. But Father, help me to rest. And I sat there and I said, I'm not going to worry about it. And before I knew it, I was waking up the next morning. I'm talking about that good sleep. I've learned that I'm not as old as some of y'all. I'm not as old as you, Sister Arnie and Sister Owen. But you can see I got a little gray. So I know a little something about life. And I've learned, and I'm continuing to learn, to totally depend on him. Do you know as bad as you want success in your life and you want everything to go well, God wants even more for you. He wants exceedingly and abundantly. You can imagine what God has in store for you. But in order to get what he has for you, you are going to learn how to talk to God so you can hear from God, and you're going to have to learn how to release control. God will tell you exactly what you need to do. I've learned that I don't even have to try. I pray about the situation, and he begins opening up doors. He begins saying no. He begins saying yes. And he begins to order my footsteps, and all of a sudden, I find myself out from under pressure. That is the God that we serve. So if you're under pressure, if you're stressed, if you're worried, if you don't know, you don't have to be that way. He says in his word that I got you. So at this point, can we just let God be God? This is the powerful thing about prayer. And then we're going to pray after I talk about prayer. When you pray, you are inviting God into your situation. God is never going to force himself into your situation. God is not a God who's going to bust down the door of your situation and show up like a superhero. But when you pray, you're saying, God, I need you. And if you will learn to humble yourself and say, God, I need you, he will show up every single time. I know there are people who need prayer. And we're going to pray. But there is, is there an individual who wants to give their life to the Lord? I want to I ask this before we pray. Is there someone who wants to 
accept him as your Lord and Savior. I invite you to come down so I can, I can pray for you. But if you don't want to come down and pray, you can just slip your hand up and I'll pray for you that way. I don't care how it gets done. I just want you to make the decision to give your life to Christ and live in the freedom and the victory that the cross has won for you. Is there one? Is there one? You got to get this out of the way. Is there one? If not, if you need prayer on today, if you desire a prayer for anything, I invite you around the altar of God as we pray one for another. Darrell, I hope I don't put you on the spot this morning, but that's my deacon. And if y'all don't know anything about this man, he can absolutely pray. So Darrell, I'm going to ask you right where you are. You ain't even got to get up and move. We're going to pray for the people on today. Whatever you need from God, whatever has you pressure, whatever you're worried about, you're not here by mistake. You're here by the design of God because he wanted to let you know that I will and I'm faithful to bring you out from under that pressure and the stress that you find yourself in. He's telling somebody that I'm going to make you new. I'm going to do new things in your life. So what I need you to do, no matter what you're going through, I don't need you to listen to your situation. I need us to stand on the word and believe the word have faith that we serve a God who's able. He sees us and he cares. So with that, stir up all the faith that you have and God will show up. Here you go, Daryl. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, and mighty and precious name of Jesus, God, as we stand before you in your divine presence, God, we thank you. We bless your glorious name right now for your your divine presence, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God, we have freedom in you, all because of Christ. God, we bless your holy and righteous name. First of all, God, we just want to reverence you, Father God, for you are holy and righteous, God. You are mighty, God. There is none, none like you, oh God. And we give your name to praise. God, we thank you for your holy word, Father God. And right now, God, we release... Hallelujah. We release everything to you, whatever pressure, whatever infirmity, whatever that may be bound in our minds right now. We ask God that you break every chain of bondage in the name of Jesus because you've done it all for us on Calvary, Father God. Hallelujah. God, we pray that you move by your Holy Spirit across this building, across each and every heart right now that's listening, that God, you may lift the pressure in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we know you as a strong tower. The righteous run of in, they are saved. We know you as a shield and a buckler, Father God. Hallelujah. We know you as a divine protector, a keeper. And Father, we bless your name. We ask for healing. We ask for strength. We ask for guidance, Father God. For Lord, we know that you alone can do it. We ask God that you bind every power, everything that may come to try to hinder your people from worship and praise and communion and walking with you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, take charge. Holy Spirit, have your way. We welcome you right now, dear God, into our hearts. We welcome you right now, Father God, into our situation where, Lord, we know that you can move. We know that you can tear down every obstacle that may try to come against us. And God, we bless your holy name. We thank you, Father God. We magnify your name. We lift up your name, for in the presence of the Lord, there is liberty. God, we call upon your name right now 
to show up on every situation here, Father. Every situation we give it unto you, Father God, for your word say, if we submit unto God and resist the devil, he will flee. We bless your name, Father, and we ask all these things in your precious name. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Help us to take communion. And I invite you all around the altar. Well, not around the altar, right where you're sitting. But they're going to bring the table around the altar. And we're going to take part in communion where we remember the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had, break, he, had, he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which was broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Right now, can we bow our heads as we pray the prayer of consecration? Father, right now as we stand before this table, as we eat the cracker and drink the juice that represent your body and your blood, we ask that you would make them holy. Make them holy. Make them acceptable for your service right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he did eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh the damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For that reason, can we bow our heads and pray the prayer of confession? Father, right now we, we humble ourselves before you. We stand before you being honest. And we say that we have not done everything that is pleasing in your sight. Father, we have missed the mark. We have sinned. And right now, Father, we repent. We turn from sin and we choose you. We believe that you or what's best for us. We believe that your way is the way. We choose you on today. So, Father, forgive us for every single sin that we have committed against you. And we ask right now that because of the perfect sacrifice of Jesus, that you would look at us not through our sins, but you would look at us through the blood of Jesus Christ. And see us as in right relationship with you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. And amen.
this is my body, which was given for you on Calvary. Eat ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which was shed for you on Calvary. Drink ye all of it. Christ died for your sins. Go your way in peace and feast on his word. Savior's blood and he did it all for me and you I hope y'all feel a little better I know I feel good on today I'm ready for this week that lies ahead I told my wife I said I done been off for a whole week I waking up at five something in the morning and going to work I just don't feel like doing but I got a little strength. Well, I believe I can make it through the week, man. As I always do, and I'm gonna continue to do because it works. I've been hearing stories about people being in accidents, they're okay. My sister was staying with us on, uh, it was Friday night, leaving our house. She gets in a bad wreck, but she was, she's okay. She's okay, she's here, and I thank God for it. And this is the very reason why I do what I do. So right now, I pray the protection of God over you. I pray that God would keep his hedge of protection around you. Allow his angels to watch over you and your families. I pray that you will experience the goodness of the Lord. I declare from this place, his power will be poured out in your life on this week. There will be testimonies in this place. There will be victory on this week. I'm declaring it right now in the precious name of Jesus. I love every single one of y'all. And I cannot wait to be back here on next Sunday. Y'all have a good one.